Hello there everybody, this is Jorge Varela for TheButtonSmasher.com and here's our review of Tokiden 2 for PS4. Now the short version of the review goes like this, it's really good! I never thought that I would enjoy myself so much with a Monster Hunter style game like this one, but I truly did! The game's likable characters, along with the awesome soundtrack, fun gameplay, and the open world style turns it into an addictive experience that I still haven't had enough of. Even after this review, I very much plan on still playing this game. If you're the kind of person that enjoys playing games that involve hitting big things until they fall over, then this is definitely the game for you. Anyway, now the long version of the review goes like this. It is always a challenge to distinguish the good Japanese monster hunting games from the boring ones. In essence, they're all the same, but they each carry specific elements that allow them to stick out from the rest. At times, it can range from an entirely new mechanic in the genre to simply having good graphics or production value. I would place Tokiden 2 in the latter category. It doesn't really do anything particularly new, but it was very hard for me to not have a good time throughout. I was not captivated by one particular selling point or gameplay segment, but rather the entire product as a whole. All aspects of the game acting as a number and an equation that makes the end result feel cohesive and engaging in a way that many other hunting games do not. Tokiden 2, as the name implies, is a sequel to the original Tokiden. You do not need to know anything about the previous games to know what's going on here, but any prior knowledge of the series does help you in knowing what to expect. To keep the story very simple, it's essentially about humans fighting monsters called the Oni, and that's pretty much it. You play as a customizable protagonist who gets sucked into an Oni portal, leaving you stranded 100 years into the future with no idea as to what happened when you were gone. After a professor and her robot assistant finds you, they take you to their village. Here is where you begin your journey to get to know everyone in the village, grow your power once more in order to defeat the human destroying Oni. This does bring one of my favorite parts of the game up. I absolutely love the characters in Tokiden 2. It usually takes some time for me to grow to like someone in games, but not here. Everyone here is immediately likable and interesting. Of course, some characters are more developed than others, some of them are just for side quests, others are full on up front in the story, but they all get their own little special moment to shine, which makes them more memorable. The biggest reason for why I continued to play the main story over the side missions was simply to see my team of people talk and interact with each other. In addition, the voice acting and the overall sound design is pretty top notch, adding even more enjoyment to the dialogue and the atmosphere. I'm not entirely I'm not entirely sure if this is common among monster hunting games, but this one contains a very big open world to explore with barely any loading screens. I like it, since it makes everything feel a lot more real. Now aside from just teleporting around, there's no loading screens when exploring around the map, which makes entering and leaving establishments smooth as butter and adds to the immersion of setting out to hunt monsters and then coming back. Speaking of hunting, the gameplay is fairly simple, but still pretty fun and full of options. For starters, your strength is based on the kind of equipment you have, rather than something more akin to a leveling system or experience points. There is a large amount of weapons that you can use, like swords, axes, spears, gauntlets, sword and shield, and a ton of others. In addition, you can also equip a set of Mitama for extra perks. These Mitama are spirits of ancient warriors that can grant you abilities like increased offense or defense or summon familiars and stuff like that. However, depending on what slot you equip them on, it'll give you different kinds of benefits. This allows for a massive amount of variety and customization, preparing you for all kinds of enemies and situations. It almost reminded me a little bit of that other game, Transistor, which had mechanics that worked in a similar fashion. Finally, you'll also have one more tool called the Demon Hand, which is essentially the same as those cool vine arms from Freedom Wars. You can use it as a slingshot or as a cool weapon for punching monsters. At the end of the day, it all boils down to just hitting big monsters over and over until they fall over. Some people might say that this is boring, but that is only true if you decide to play it this way. Most of the fun will come out of being creative, with all of the gear and the mitama that is available to you, which isn't even including all the partners that you can recruit to fight with you. The more you dig around and find new ways to fight, the better your experience will be. Overall, I think the game is awesome. As I said, it doesn't do anything groundbreaking, but everything else that it does do is very well done. From the gameplay, to the sound, to the awesome graphics and the characters, all of it was made with a lot of love and polish that kept me playing longer than I ever expected. Even if you're not necessarily a fan of monster hunting multiplayer games, I still think this is a good enough game to check out. I played this entire time by myself and had a great time with just enjoying the characters alone, so I say you give it a go.